production. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the New Stack Makers. I'm your host, Heather Joslin, Editor-in-Chief of the New Stack, and uh, we're on the road today. We're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at PyCon US. It's the uh, conference for the uh, contributors to the, to the Python language and, and everything that goes with it. And uh, we're here today to talk about um, Python and generative AI. Everyone's under a lot of pressure to use the technology of the moment, generative AI or gen AI to its friends, in, uh, in the apps that they're building. And we're going to talk today about building those apps in Python with um, Amazon Bedrock, which is AWS's uh, gen AI framework. And there have been some new capabilities added to Amazon Bedrock lately, and we're going to talk about all that with our guest today, Suman Debnath from AWS. Hi, Suman. Hi, hello. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing all right. Doing yeah. all right. Um, so, uh, Suman, tell me a little bit about what you do at AWS. Sure. Uh, firstly, thank you so much for having me here. Really Absolutely. a pleasure to be here. So I work as a principal developer advocate for machine learning at AWS. And what I essentially do is I try to build content uh, around machine learning, data science, and uh, which will help builders mm -hmm. to build applications. Mm -hmm. So this is what my uh, core focus uh, for the last uh, four or five years at Amazon. Oh, great. And I imagine you're a lot busier these days because, yeah. uh, you know, everybody's everybody's uh, building, yeah. building uh, I, I think are I, starting to anyway. Absolutely. So I think uh, this is a, uh, we are living in a very exciting times. Uh, I remember that when I joined Amazon uh, almost five years back, that was the mm -hmm. first PyCon I uh, attended in Chennai in India. Mm -hmm. And today uh, it's almost five years. And when I roam around uh, this place, it's completely different. The one thing is common across all the booths, all the companies, all the developers that I have met so far is that uh, they all are aware of artificial intelligence. That's a big step up. Uh, mm -hmm. It was not the case before. So uh, we are here to help developers and builders to uh, you know, make everyone's life better. So I, I, I'm, I mean, I, I feel myself very, very lucky uh, to oh. be part of that. How long have you, been, you personally been building things in Python? So Python, I started working full time in 2015, and prior to that, I used to work on and off. So my background is, uh, I started my career in storage and systems where I used to work with the quality engineering team mm -hmm. and uh, tool development. So gradually, I went uh, towards tool development and framework automation and all that. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started to work with uh, Python. And my first interaction with Python was mostly with numbers. Uh, so I had to build some dashboard uh, mm -hmm. for my company, not Amazon, but the previous company I used to work for. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started to feel the gravity of data and Python and how easy that easily one can get started with that. And since then, uh, I got into machine learning. Yeah. Let's just jump in because I think this is something a lot of people want to want to learn more about. Absolutely. Um, for starters, what makes Python well suited for building Gen AI applications? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that uh, uh, you, you will get a bias that uh, when we start talking about machine learning. Uh, people tend to start with Python. There mm -hmm. are two reasons for that. One is it's very easy to get started with. And second is, I guess the whole ecosystem of data science and machine learning, it started with Python majorly, not mm -hmm. with other languages. Uh, and it makes sense as well, because it's not, you don't need a higher level, I mean, lower level API kind of an access to your hardware. I'm telling you from, let's say, five years back, uh, mm -hmm. where we started off with. And Python was pretty good language to get started quickly, right? You don't have to mm -hmm. understand how things, how networking stack, how storage, how hardware works. So I think Python is the go-to language for any developers as we speak today. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes the ecosystem so wild that today, if you have to pick one language to get started with data science and machine learning, it should be uh, Python, right? So mm -hmm. that, that, that's, the, that's the thing for developers who are building and working around machine learning. Now, when it comes to building generative AI-based application, that is a different story because there you don't need a data science expertise. The whole idea is how you can use these machine learning models from your application. And for that, you can use any language of your choice. Mm. So that's the beauty of the use cases of AI. There you can use any language. But when you talk about machine learning and data science, uh, it's mostly Python because the ecosystem and support system that we have around, it's phenomenal. Are there challenges to building, to building Gen AI apps with Python specifically? Yeah, so I think uh, if, if I look at the challenges, uh, that would be very much generic to Python, um, may not be very specific to Gen AI, uh, but I feel in the last couple of years, 
Python has offered us much more than the trade-offs that it has, uh, because mm -hmm. there, every language has its own trade-offs. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have to pick few of them uh, uh, in the context of generative AI or large language model or machine learning in general, is would be the latency or the performance. So performance is a key factor when it comes to building application with generative AI uh, based uh, uh, you know, technology. Mm. Uh, because at the end of the day, what you do is you send a prompt and you wait for the response. Now you want your answer to come back to you as soon as possible. Right. Uh, so this is on the use case standpoint. On the building standpoint, when you train a model, you have to make sure that you take the resources for shortest period of time so that your training period is less and you pay less. So for that, you have to make sure that you, you pick a language which is very fast. Mm -hmm. And for that, you need there are a few challenges that Python has, uh, mm -hmm. which it has since the beginning, but gradually we are going away from that. Uh, for example, if you look at the latest version of Python uh, 3.11, 3.12, we have a huge improvement uh, in terms of performance. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we have SciPy, PyPy. So those performance implications or the improvements have drastically impacted uh, the development of core Python uh, frameworks, which we use for uh, building these models. So I feel, going forward, we will see more and more enhancement which will make us feel comfortable with Python, yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk a bit about Amazon Bedrock. Um, now that sure. was introduced, uh, the initial version came out in September of yep. last year, 2023. Um, what what is Amazon Bedrock? Yep. So Amazon Bedrock is the uh, fully managed service, and it's the easiest way to you can get started building your generative AI application. So what does it mean? So it means that uh, we have a lot of AI startups uh, like Anthropic, um, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, Mistrail, and so on and so forth. Yep, right. So what uh, Bedrock offers you is a single pane of glass where you just go there and you can write your application use and you can use any of these large language model with just one line of code wow. so all these uh, you don't have to change your code drastically when you switch from one AI startup to another AI startup mm -hmm. so let's say you start off with today with Mistrail tomorrow you want to try let's say Claude mm -hmm. so you don't have to change anything you just have to change few lines of code and you are done. Mm -hmm. So that makes it very easy for any developer to come uh, on AWS and get started with it without knowing anything about machine learning, without knowing about what is happening under the hood with the different models. Mm -hmm. All we are providing is an API-based service. So you can think of it like, like a model as a service. So mm -hmm. you come here and you can, you, you could be in, uh, writing your code in Python, uh, C, C++, Java, whatever it is. Yeah. You can just use the API uh, to use the goodness of all these large language models. I like that phrase, model as a service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. A good, that's a good... When, um, what, are, what are some of the new capabilities that have been rolled out most re more recently? Yeah, so this has been evolving ever since uh, we announced. Uh, so we started off with uh, giving you an opportunity to see how things work in the form of Playground, where you can just log into AWS console mm -hmm. and you can search, uh, I mean, you can just search for Bedrock and then you can go to a Playground where you can select different models mm -hmm. and you can ask questions. Let me show it to you so, so sure. that you can get a- Sure, we'll, we'll a, go to the, dem the demo. So if you see this, mm -hmm. this is the AWS console and I am on the Bedrock page. Okay. And here, if you see the uh, on the left-hand side, you have getting started. And you see all these different uh, AI startups, right? You can right. select any of these uh, models and get started with. So the first thing that we have is the playground, right? So this is where you can get started with. Mm -hmm. So you can click on chat and select the model of your choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say Claude. I can select any of this a model and you can simply start writing your question and getting the answer. So that is the first way to get started. Uh -huh. But we also started investing a lot on knowledge base. Mm -hmm. So this is where these models are trained on some data, right? Uh, which are like internet scale data. But what if you are from a domain which whose data is not publicly available. So mm -hmm. that means these models have never seen your data. Right. For example, uh, let's say research or medical research or legal, right? These documents are not available publicly. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you need to have your own data and you want to still leverage these large language models. Mm -hmm. So this is where uh, there is something called uh, vector database or RAG, uh, yep, retrieval right. augmented generation. There is a technique where you can somehow use your data along the side of a large language model. So mm -hmm. this is where knowledge base comes in, where you can create your own knowledge base, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. I have one knowledge base here. So imagine that your organization of healthcare or insurance can create one knowledge base. You can just 
give your data, right? So mm -hmm. that's all. And then under the hood, it will create a bunch of things. It will convert the data into uh, vectors and store mm -hmm. it in a vector database. And what makes it very powerful is once you have this, you can simply click here and mm -hmm. start asking questions. So now if you ask any question here, so let's mm -hmm. say what Amazon is doing towards generative AI. So the knowledge base that I have here uh, contains uh, all the stakeholder letters and the Amazon uh, uh, newsletters and Amazon uh, share, I mean, the publicly available right. uh, details uh, for last 10 years. And if you see this, when I asked this question, it was able to give the answer. Right? Wow. So it actually re read through all those uh, documents of my organization uh -huh. and you can make use of uh, LLMs like that. Yeah. So this would be, you would use this internally if it's private, if it's private data, right. it's not, it's not a public facing, it wouldn't be for a public facing Correct. app. Okay. Correct. So th there are two uh, uh, reasons that you will go with this. One is you cannot use Mistrail model or Claude model because they don't, they have not trained the model based on your organization's data. Right. So there are two options that you have. You either uh, you train the model again in your uh, premise, which is not possible because it's a huge money and investment, right? Yeah. You cannot uh, <laughs> fine tune it. You cannot, um, uh, you know, maybe uh, continue the pre-training. These are the options that you have. You right. can always do that if you want to. But this is pretty easy to get started with uh, because you are not altering the model. All you are doing is now you are not asking the question directly to the model. You're first asking the question to the vector database where you have stored all your company yeah. data and then that is giving you the context. The an best analogy is this. Let's say you come to me uh, to learn something and mm -hmm. I am a librarian uh -huh. and you ask me a question. So what I will do is I will just give you five books and I will say that, hey, Heather, you can just read the first chapter from this book, second chapter from this book, you should be able to get the answer. Mm -hmm. So this is what this retrieval augmented generation does. Right. It just goes to your data, it just filters out the data that is in context with your question, and then when I give you the date question and your uh, data, uh, mm -hmm. then you will get the answer. All you have to do is you just have to read that book, right? So right. Similarly, uh, now uh, any large language model can get the answer. Yeah. yeah. And we've written about RAG quite a bit in the new stack, so this right. will be this will be and we'll we'll link to some of the, the key stories in in the story that goes with this this video. Absolutely. Um, but uh, so that's good. So they've got that RAG capabilities. Um, are there other ways in which it makes it easier, specifically with Python, for, for a developer to, to, uh, yep. Yep. to build so apps? I think uh, one of the things that uh, a Bedrock has done is uh, it's not just uh, a Python, right? Mm. It's an API-based service. So you can use uh, Java, JavaScript, Python, .NET, mm -hmm. any language of your choice. Because it is completely agnostic uh, to programming language. It is completely agnostic uh, to the models that you are trying to use. Because mm. it's an API service. It's, at the end of the day, it's just an API. Right, so you it doesn't matter which programming language you use. Now, specifically Python, uh, it is much more easier because most of the cases we have seen uh, in today's world that people are using Python for developing their web applications or mm. backend systems and all that. Although I would say that in the front end side, we have seen a lot of different languages like JavaScript and so on, uh, but you can always use Bedrock. When it comes to Bedrock, it has nothing to do with the programming language. You can use the language of your choice and uh, you just have to use uh, the uh, the SDK. But one good thing about Bedrock is it has a very good ecosystem with other uh, 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 third-party libraries which are open source like uh, Langchain, Llama mm -hmm. Index and all that. Mm -hmm. So you have the flexibility to use that within your existing framework which you are using. So it's not like you have to use Amazon's SDK to get started with Bedrock. That's a question I did have was, how do you get started with Bedrock? If you're yep. if so, you're watching this, listening to this, you're interested, your developers sure. are interested. Yeah, so one of the things that uh, uh, I would recommend to get started with, uh, we have a platform called community.aws, right? This is the place where a lot of experts from AWS, as well as from the community, they mm -hmm. keep on writing things. So here you can come to generative AI space and you will get everything uh, to get started with, uh, you know, around generative AI, not mm -hmm. only Bedrock, but other generative AI based services like Amazon Q. So this is one of the place. The other place I would recommend is to search for Amazon Bedrock Workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you just uh, search it, uh, you will find the link where you will go through a step-by-step -step, uh, your workshop content, which mm -hmm. will help you to get started uh, with a Bedrock. And apart from that, uh, there are 
many AWS uh, user groups across the globe. Whichever is closer to your city, I would recommend uh, to join uh, that user group and mm -hmm. stay connected with the community because in those meetups, what happens is speakers come across the globe and they speak about uh, you know different technologies. And in today's world, most of the talk are around generative AI. So indirectly, you will be uh, you will be getting to learn a lot uh, in those community meetups. Yeah. Excellent. Are there are there any challenges still to to um, being solved around uh, uh, working with Python in in um, in uh, Bedrock? Yeah. So I think uh, uh, the challenge is uh, the ecosystem is developing very fast. Right. Mm -hmm. So by the time something is getting stabilized, something new is coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel that in terms of the ecosystem. Uh, this churn will be there for, for, for some time. This is my personal opinion mm -hmm. that uh, we will get to see uh, a stability after some time because we are still in the experimental phase. I'm not talking about bedrock. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the entire ecosystem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, when it comes to uh, bedrock, if you have seen or if you have noticed, we are releasing uh, different models uh, from different AI startups uh, You know, every passing month. Mm -hmm. And I feel that for any developer, uh, they should embrace and it, they should actually, uh, you know, get used to this change. Because a lot of times, uh, it's very difficult for any company uh, to make changes, rapid changes. Uh, yeah. But uh, I think one of the mindshare that we, we should all have that this change is important for us, right, mm -hmm. for our good being. In, if you look at, you know, if you have a long-term vision. So I feel that there are a lot of uh, uh, challenges that we have today in terms of the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, like, for example, hallucination is one of them. One of the very, very important is guard railing, like uh, uh, how authentic your response is that you are getting from the large mm -hmm. language model mm -hmm. and whether that is that has any bias or not. We have to have the response which is very much neutral in nature and not opinionated. Right. Uh, so I think there are a lot of uh, focus that we are uh, putting on the security aspect and the guard railing. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this is one of the features that we announced uh, a few weeks back uh, around guard rail uh, with Bedrock. So I think security, data privacy, and uh, customization, mm -hmm. where the model will work based on your data, I, these are the futures uh, and enhancements that you, you would pr potentially see in the industry, uh, not just AWS, but uh, in the whole ecosystem. And that sounds, seems like a good place to uh, wrap up. Uh, we want to thank Suman Debnath for, for joining us today from thank AWS. You. Um, we'd also like to thank AWS for sponsoring our conversation today, and we'd li like to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, this has been Heather Joslin for the New Stack Makers. We'll see you next time. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.